Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We are in now in the Swiss round two after that exciting first match between Tyler and Luca. You know, well, I was hoping the blast would be a little bit more effective, but it wasn't that effective. Obviously showing the strength of that standard team format. Luca taking that battle 2-0. Oh, oh, and what were your thoughts on that match overall? The thoughts are it shows why Ogre Pong is probably one of the most used Pokemon in the format. Yeah. I, I mean, Blastoise, it came and did its job. It did his job very poorly. It did his job very poorly. Yeah. Um, you know, like like we were talking about how they were running a Fluttermane and how they had Calm Mind Fluttermane. You know what would have been really great? If they had some form of redirection. You know what brings redirection? Wellspring Ogre Pong. And Blastoise who also is a water type and quad resist water. You know what I'm saying? You get yeah. where I'm going. Which is honestly, funnily enough, the Blastoise did the opposite of redirection because that's flip turn. Because it just has flip turn. So <laughs> it, it just put something it, else it, it didn't place. redirect, it just pivoted. So <laughs> it could have done a better job. You could have like brought out the Ogre Pong and paired it with the Fluttermane, get the calm mind off, and then Dazzling Gleam win the game. But um, yeah, no, it was it was an interesting take to see the Blastoise come out. Um, but it did as I expected it to do. Yeah, did about as I expected it to as well. Not as well as I was hoping for it, though. Because yeah. like we were mentioning before, and I won't, I won't stick on the point too much longer because we have a lot more action coming up. Uh, I love the generalist Pokemon uh, kind of play style, yeah. and that one would have fit very well in a different way. Sub-generalist for bad Pokemon, and then that's what Daniel likes. Basically. Like, Pokemon that can find a niche where other Pokemon generally do it better, mm -hmm. but this one does it in a very specific way that those Pokemon can't. And I love that. Yeah. I love that. But, complete opposite of a mm -hmm. generalist Pokemon, you keep mentioning the Ogre Pond. For those at home, what makes this Pokemon such a strong thing that you need to do, be able to deal with? Most... Uh, specifically, um, the Wellspring Ogre Pond. That seems to be the more popular one, but of course the other variants as well. Yeah, Wellspring is a little bit more bulky than the other types. Wellspring with special defense and stuff like that. Um, with the uh, Terrasal Edition boost, you get special defense boost. It's quad resistant to any water types. So with Wellspring Ogre Pond it's coming... grass water. So. Yeah, grass water. Since Wellspring Ogre Pond has came into the meta and stuff like that and came into being like you know able to be used, it sort of brought down Rapid Strikes Urshifu's usage a ton. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, because like if you have uh, Rapid Rapid Strikes, Urshifu, come out, boom, use water moves. It doesn't like, do anything. Like kicking. I, I wish they can see. I'm like doing like, ooh, ooh, like the kicks that Urshifu does. But it does, does like with the fist. No, but it like kicks. That. It's rapid. Like with the kicks, it's it ki with the Rapid Strikes, Urshifu kicks. Oh, okay. I thought it's well, Surging Strikes. Yeah, because it's just one punt. It's okay. Anyways, this guy kicks. doesn't even know anything. It's kicks. Uh, I, don't, I don't think Urshifu is a kicker, but go ahead. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, Wells, uh, Wellspring Ogre Pong, obviously super specially defensive. It's very good at, like um, like I said, redirection with Follow Me. Um, mm -hmm. It's a super good supportive Pokemon as well. And Ogre Pong in, in general is super versatile. You can go defensive and supportive uh, with Wellspring, which with still good damage output. Or you can go like super attacking, uh, like focused, go with the Hearthling Ogre Pong. It's a great Pokemon. And that's why we see it on like what, 90% of teams, pretty much, and across like all different forums. That's where that flexibility kind of comes into mm -hmm. factor. Um, Pokemon that can do a lot of different things and do them all very well yeah. are probably the most important, flexible, and popular Pokemon because you can mm. stick them on any type of team and they will find success. Um, not a lot of type, not a lot of Pokemon can do that, but the ones that do are usually the most popular ones, like yeah. Landorus, like Atomatus, like et etc. Cetera, et cetera. Anyways, moving on from that round one matchup, we do have the results from round one, Ooh. meaning we also do have the matchup that's going to be on stream next. We have Jesse versus Marcus Dion. So it'll be nice to see. We're going to take a awesome. look at the team sheets really quick. Um, we also have the results from uh, the first round as well. Uh, I don't know if we see. We have some returning names uh, like uh, De Ravone, who won, won yesterday, yesterday as yeah. well. Um, yeah, we have some returning names that we kind of see. Gus who was my favorite in the last time that we did this broadcast together. Oh, yeah. Gus, he was, the, he was the guy who brought the Arcalid on Rain team oh. and stuff. Uh, I, I don't know what he's bringing today. I tried talking to him, but he was being very, like, uh, secretive I with asked. What, his strats and stuff like that. Um, we'll get into that kind of stuff later. Let's touch on our matchup real quick. Let's take a look at these team sheets real quick. Touch on Jesse for me real quick. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I kind of laughed a little bit when I first saw the team because it's... A Pokemon, a lot of Pokemon that we were just talking about. We were literally just talking about <laughs> Tornadus, uh, Landorus, Ogre Pond, Wellspring. Yeah. These are 
in my opinion, some of the big three of this uh, format. Olgerbond, definitely. Landorus and Tornadus, maybe not necessarily big three, mm -hmm. but they are in the orbit. Um, Olgerbond, again, a lot of teams will throw it on, and it's not a, it's not a thing you splash in, pun intended, um, just for the heck of it. Mm -hmm. It is a huge part of your team, but you don't have to... You don't have to stretch your team around it. It will just fit, and it will fit well, and it will do a very good job. You don't yeah. have to do too much to accommodate it. So I think sure. that's a big reason why it's such an important Pokemon. And of course, it's on this team, and I think it's going to be a huge part of the success for it. But if you want to touch on Marcus a little bit for us. Yeah, Marcus is bringing out Amoongus, uh, Rapid Rex, Urshifu, Raging oh. Bolt, Pelipper, Landorus Eye, and uh, Hisuian Arcanine. Uh, so obviously, Pelipper coming out to set up the rain to kind of help out Urshifu. Um, be interesting to see what else it does set up, though. I'm, I'm not too sure. It, it's really looking like it's just like a one, one Pokemon setup move. I, I, generally, you see like Pelipper. You see other Pokemon that can come and sort of Pelipper. benefit from. Yeah, he has Pelipper as one of his okay. <laughs> Like, if I see Pelipper, I'm like, okay, cool. Maybe an Arcaladon comes through, yeah, no, takes no advantage Arcaladon. of like Electra Shot. No. You know, you got Rapid Strikes. You have one. You have Rapid Strikes, Ashifu, and you have like Pelipper. It might be that's Raging probably... Bolt with the uh, wait. You have raging, think, raging it's bolt. not even running thunder. It is. It's running thunderclap. Thunder, thunderclap, but not thunder. But not thunder. Yeah. That's a missed opportunity. 100%. That That's insane. <laughs> well, hey, you know. It's an interesting team. I, and I guess we'll kind of like have to wait and see. Both of these players, what do they kind of do? Marcus went. They both won. So okay. we're at like a one and one matchup right now. Right. Um, it, it's, it's very interesting to kind of see. I, I'm it, super intrigued to see what Marcus has in store. For sure. I feel like generally. Hmm. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to speak too strongly here, but I feel like if you're not running the Thunder on the Raging Bull, maybe just an Arcaladon would be better. It's got Electric Web, right? Oh well, uh, like, does well. well Arcaladon whoa. probably doesn't learn Electric Web. Does is, it? No, I'm talking about Raging Bull. Right. Is Electro Web Snarl? Snarl. So it's like more of a. It's kind of like a more supportive, supportive. sort of. And, and like you can go that way. Raging Bull is a very. Um, like bulky Pokemon for sure, like assault super vest hot support mon. I yeah, like assault vest. Yeah, it's rocking the assault vest. It's kind of going for like a more supportive side of things. Um, so, like you know, that's kind of the way they're going for it. But it, it's very interesting to see. Generally, you see Raging Bolt kind of going for high damage outputs sort or of because that's what it's you know sort of designed to do. But mm -hmm. it's in it's interesting. Uh, I'm excited to see this. I'm very excited to see it as well. Like, I I love to see. You're making fun of me for it uh, after, during the break, but I love to see the more. Again, I'm not sure exactly the word, but skirmishy type. Like Pokemon that's not going to do an instant, like one hit KO move or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But this Raging Bolt will be a problem if you ignore it. It's not going to completely wipe your team. It's not going to do anything crazy like that. Yeah. But it's a problem that your opponent's going to have to deal with. Terra Bug as well. Uh, I think. Uh, any anything come to your mind for the Terra, terra Bug? Is it just not? Uh, it's it's just help. It's a good defensive Terra type. Yeah. Like we saw it a couple weeks ago, back when uh, we saw like a Raging Bolt on every team. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a good defensive Terra type, which is what Raging Bolt is trying to do. Um, so I'm excited to see that. Really quick though, before we head into game, I need predictions. I need thoughts. I mean, I feel like Jesse's team is a lot more standard. It's a lot yeah. more straightforward mm -hmm. and simple to execute. I feel like there's not a lot of things that can go wrong with your team. Right. You just play smart, play around your opponent, you win the set. But I feel like with uh, with Marcus's team, it is a little bit more feast or famine. Uh, you have to play smart at all po at all points. There is a lot more that can go wrong. Of course, both players have to play smart to win. Yeah. But I feel like a lot more can go wrong. You know, you're running a Pelipper. Uh, you know, you're already kind of at a disadvantage. Right? <laughs> Pretty much, seeing as it's only helping out one Pokemon. Right. And even in the sense that it is helping that one Pokemon, it's not even, really. Like, it's giving yeah. a little bit of a boost. Like, a little bit of a boost to the like, their attack. already going to wipe And we'll see what Pokemon, happens. As we're heading into the first battle here, we see the leading off. We see the Urshifu and the Arcanine on the side of Marcus and Jesse with the Tornadus and Landorus getting things started off here, contemplating between the Tailwind and the Bleak Wind Storm. Both players here are going to have to do a lot of work to make sure they get the first start here off well, because the first turn is the most important. Yeah, something to note too is that Landorus is going for uh, Choice Band as well. 
So it's going for max damage output. Obviously, Lander what? is super, super, super strong. I think a base 140 attack on Lander is T. Okay. Um, but yeah, <laughs> Lander is going to go for the choice ban. Um, interesting right. pick, though. You don't really see that oftentimes with Lando T. You know, you have the U turn to sort of pivot out. Lando T tries to be a little bit, not versatile, right? It's obviously super like high attacking power, mm -hmm. but you know, you want to get more move variation within your turns. Drastalization is going to come through on the Urshifu right now, going into the water type, and we'll see what this kind of brings out for him. For sure. I, I was just thinking a little bit, if you're running, running a Landorus with the uh, the Choice Band, maybe an Earthquake wouldn't be a bad idea, especially if you're leading it off with the Tornadus. There's not a lot of downsides to it, but we're getting this first turn started off. A switch out for the Landorus. It got the Intimidate off it, did That's the smart. job, and it's going to come back out now. Ogre Pond, Ooh. I really like that pick. Setting up against the Ar Arcanine and the the Urshifu view won't be able to do as much damage, so a very strong start. That is, this is a beautiful, a beautiful turn. Uh, obviously, because uh, Wellspring Ogre Pong has the water absorb, so the Wrap Strikes, like uh, Surging Strikes, isn't going to do any damage whatsoever. It would heal it too. Yeah, but Tornadus falls instantly to Arcanine with the head smash. It, it did get the Tailwind off, I believe. Oh, oh my God! That's a lot of damage. That's a lot of recoil. <laughs> okay, uh, but. I, I want to say it did the job, but I'm not sure if he wanted it to do that job, honestly. Yeah. I feel like, okay, to be fair, uh, well, it's going to be slower. Yeah, it's not going to get to do anything else because the Tailwind is up and uh, mm -hmm. it's already low HP, so it's going to it's gonna fall here. Yeah. The, your Arcanine is basically out, but it is going to be absorbing a hit because I don't think any of these mods have uh, spread moves. Uh, so Urshifu actually getting switched out. Going to be bringing in here Amoongus. Yeah, you did talk about spread room, spread moves. Uh, Arcanine does have Rock Slide. Um, uh, I meant so on it, the side of Jesse. Oh, you meant on the side of yeah. Jesse. Yeah, not really but much of a spread option for him, uh, besides Earthquake on maybe Lambert T. Um, but yeah, it's interesting. Oh, wow, Chen Pao goes for the Ice Spinner. It was initially trying to get Ice Spinner onto the Arcanine just to get the knockout, but Lando Eye comes through, and wow, that's a tough, that's a tough switch in. It's, it's gonna be very hard to deal with. But it's you're gonna have to do with it one way or the other here. Uh, Jesse is making a very smart play. I feel like in hindsight that must that that is just the smartest way to go for all around. One way or the other, you're happy with the result. Intimidate is gonna chip down the attack for that Chan Pal, but realistically, I don't think it's gonna mind too much. The Arcanine is already so low. It's gonna go for an ice spinner on it again, and then the Ogre Pond with the follow me potentially just to redirect any threats to that Chan Pao. It is a very weak Pokemon, but I really feel like right now it's not facing any threats. I feel like Amoong Amoonga just clicks Spore here. I 100%. I feel like it just clicks Spore. I feel like the way to go is Chen Pao goes Ice Spinner on Amoongus. Mm -hmm. Ogre Punk. Yeah, uh, you know what? Maybe as not. I mentioned it, Arcanine's probably going to go E Speed right now, so it's still oh, going to take damage point. regardless. Yep. Um, but he's still a Focus Ash, so it's going to live. So I, I don't think the Follow Me is the play. I do think you kind of double up. You finish off both Pokemon just right away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the E Speed comes through. And it's not going to do that much damage. Well, it, it does over half, which is still pretty solid. But Chen is going to go pick up off the Arcanine. And Amoongus probably going to score, if I had to guess. Uh, I'd hope so. Pollen Puff onto the Ogre Pond. OK. Yeah, I uh, guess trying to double into down. the Ogre Pond, just trying to get as much damage as possible. Oh, maybe it was trying to heal the uh, no. Arcanine, but got redirected by Solomon. But Amoongus is too slow to get the heal off anyways. Because both, both Pokemon are like pretty low. They were probably just trying to dish it, double into Ogre Pong to try and pick it out, but still lives on 17 HP. It's a good turn from Jesse right now. And now it's just, you know, trying to see how much damage you can really get onto that Urshifu. The spiky shield, I believe, is going to go on the side of the Ogre Pong, but Chen Pao getting switched out. <laughs> now with the Urshifu back in and action. It's only a Lando T that can come back in, too. For sure. It's going to do the Intimidate again, so Urshifu is going to be a little bit weakened. But I, I feel like that's a bit of the downside, is you don't want to commit such a strong hitter for Urshifu to hit something so low like the Ogre Pond. But it's, I don't know oh, if it's going to no. knock out the Landorus. Okay. Oh my. It will knock out the Landorus, even with the uh, reduced attack. So it's not all doom and gloom for Marcus, but it's still going to have to deal with this champion. Tough switch in after tough switch in. Yeah. Every single switch has just kind of gone poorly for both sides. Uh, and it's pretty tough. It's pretty tough when you have. Tailwind is out too now. Tailwind is out too. But Chen Pao is still pretty fast. Like, Chen Pao is an extremely fast Pokemon. And it's probably the fastest on the field, anyways. So it's not really going to matter too much for, like, the side of Jesse. Um, 
I think Urshifu was Scarfed, if I remember correctly. It is Scarfed, so it's probably just going to move first anyways, which is going to be tough. Okafong going for the follow me. Yeah, I, I, that's, that's probably a safe bet. You do want your... Um, uh, what's it called? You do want your oh, Chen Pao living here. Oh, I just realized the significance of all of that. And that's going to allow the Umungus to go down. It's just the Urshifu left. That follow me being such a huge play there. That choice scarf... Uh, and he's just going to follow me now. He just wins the game. Yeah. He just wins the game. He just doesn't follow me do. and he wins. That is going to be the first follow game me? going no. away. Oh, it's fine. It, it's probably going to cancel the battle anyways. It's like, um, but I mean, you just follow me at that point. He's locked into the moves. I don't think Jesse knows that necessarily. I don't think he knows that oh, he is scarfed. Oh, that's a good point. Because it doesn't give any text when uh, Pokemon is scarfed or choice to anything. So mm -hmm. you just have to know based off of the difference. In just based off the speed. Right. Yeah, just based off of how fast he's moving. But... If you just went for the follow me too, he definitely won. Definitely wins. I can't see but it is. how he can lose here, but it, it's technically possible. We saw some crazy stuff last time. <laughs> we saw some crazy stuff the last couple of games, so we'll see. But, uh, I mean, all in all, the way that this battle kind of turned out for both players, like you mentioned, all those tough switches, surging strikes is going to be landing on the Gen Pao, actually. Uh, and it might take it down. It will knock it out for sure. It's going to do enough damage to knock out Chen Pao. And now it's just up to Ogre Pong to see if Ogre Pong can win, which they will win the battle. It's just Ogre Pong left over. So even if, like, you know, they, they can't change the move. So it's just Surging Strikes is going right. to go into Ogre Pong and right. it's just over for it. Okay, right. Yes, it is locked in Surging Strikes unless it can find a way to cause the healing to damage. It's, it's out of the battle. Yeah. So again, this battle going the way of Jesse for the first round. Like you mentioned, I want you to touch on a little bit more if possible the way that these switch-ins changed the course of the battle for both of these trainers here. How do you think it ended up causing the flow of battle to change? If there's any specific scenario that you can recall. It's just tough, you know? Every switch-in switch was a switch-in for the worst, right? You had Surging Strikes coming in on a switch-in to Land OT, which is obviously not great for Land OT. Land OT <laughs> just got the Intimidate off and didn't get much uses besides that. Um, you had an Ice Spinner, I believe, on the Lando I. It was just really Landorus who just got completely destroyed yeah. just by the switch-ins. Um, it is very interesting for sure. Obviously, the switch-in was for a good reason, but I mean, uh, it just didn't end up going well. It was kind of like a 50-50 switch-in. You had things, uh, other things to worry about too. So it, it, it is pretty tough. Um, what do you think, though, we need to see change <laughs> for the next game? I feel like Jesse's lineup was just so... I'm trying to find the right word for it. This is where having a thesaurus on the desk would be very helpful. It would also look very cool. But I think what I'm going to lean towards saying is just like potent. Every every turn, uh, Marcus was at risk of something. Marcus was at risk of losing one of his strongest supers. Marcus was mm -hmm. at risk of getting switched in and losing the advantage. Marcus was at risk of something. So very potent, very threatening team lineup right. on the side of Jesse. I feel like if Marcus wants to answer it, I think he might want to lean more into it. Honestly, maybe go for the, the Rain Dance strat or the Drizzle Palipper strat and just kind of all in on your own game plan instead of necessarily trying to be uh, flexible against dealing with your opponents. What are your thoughts? I'm just looking at the Pelipper right now. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to see Sash. like what it can do. It has wide guard to try yeah, and block like any sort of spread moves, but I'm not sure if Jesse even has. Oops, sorry, I keep dropping these like team sheets. We don't have enough space with all the plushies going on right here. I don't even think Jesse has any spread moves to sort of benefit off yeah, right. of that wide guard. To be honest, mm -hmm. besides like icy wind, which won't really do too much. My, a bleak wind storm. I guess it does have some spread moves, um, <laughs> but I, like even it's, still, I, I, they, it is the lead though. The, mm -hmm. They led with the tornadoes and landers before, so yeah. if you're leading with your Pelipper, which you'd kind of have to, right? Uh, but that was that, that was Jesse who did lead that, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, Je Jesse's the one who has the Lando Eye and yeah. or sorry, uh, so Lando you could T wide and guard. I. Like wide guard could actually matter for the start and give you some, yeah. some time to kind of set things up. But again, mm -hmm. with the Urshifu. That's the only one that really benefits off of the rain. I don't know if you want to be leading with that. Uh, if you're un if you're if you're scared of the threats that your opponent has, mm -hmm. you're leading with that with the rain. You might be able to KO one of them. But with that wide, if the wide guard does work out in the favor, then it was really good. Like I said, feast or famine. I do think though, now that you keep bringing it up, honestly, I think it's kind of the lead. 
Mm-hmm. I think it is the lead. I think Pelipper yeah. or Shibu is the lead. I think so. If they do go with the to- uh, uh, what's it called? The tornado eye and it's feats or famine. If Lando they- T. If they do bring that out, but if they don't, <laughs> it's the lead. But if they don't, and it, it's kind of tough. Right. Uh, we'll see. It's kind of like, tough. We have Wellspring Ogre Pong in the back line who will greatly benefit off of the rain for you yeah. know Ivy Cudgel. <laughs> the, it's it, it's it's I catch think- twenty two. It's really tough. I'm sh- I'm thinking now. I might have okay. I think it's a little bit obvious to me now. You forego Urshifu because Urgapon's a threat yeah. and lean more into your Raging Bolt, potentially. It's not a huge... Okay. This is where a situation where you wish you did have Thunder <laughs> uh, because I feel like this Raging Bolt's it more is, to it's, It is a very strange, strange yeah. pick for sure. Um, they're going with the speed control with like Electro Web, but I would assume you would probably want to like bring a Flutter, go Icy Wind if you really wanted to. Yeah. Bring another Icy Wind Pokemon. I feel like the, the Arcanine... Uh, might not. I'm not sure, but our our thoughts are going to be confirmed we'll here as we see the lead from Marcus is the Pelipper Landorus with the Tornadus Landorus on the side of Jesse. The exact same lead up as we saw in the previous set, but whether or not Marcus has swapped out for either the Raging Bolt or the Urshifu, we're going to have to wait and see as we get into the second battle here, round two of the Swiss bracket. Jesse up one game, Pelipper using that wide guard like we kind of contemplated, but will it work out in his favor? The Sludge Bomb from Landers coming out to the enemy Landers. Of course, not very effective. Might have been trying to predict a switch in. U-turn coming out from Jesse. Going to allow the switch to come back out. We're most likely going to see Ogre Pond come out thanks to that rain being visible. Exactly what we're going to be seeing. And then that Landorus is going to have the honors for the last turn. Unless it might have acted first and done the Tailwind. While the, oh, no. It's going to go for the uh, Bleak Wind Storm, which is going to get blocked with the White Guard. So a very solid start from both players so far, if you ask me. Maybe not so much for that Landorus using the Sludge Bomb. Didn't end up doing too much, but that Wide Guard call going perfectly. Yeah, it was a good play for Marcus, for sure. The Wide Guard came into effect, uh, sorry, into good effect, for sure. Um, maybe leaning into, like we talked about, that Urshifu pick would have been, you know, a good choice, but find out. only time will tell. Landris comes back out, and will Urshifu come out? It's, it's going to be Arcanine, which is also very strange. <laughs> it doesn't do... It's, it's not very strange. To, it, it's very strange to take out your, you know, ground type to bring in a Pokemon who's quad weak to your Ogre Pong, who's probably going to get Terrastalized right here if we do have to... Yeah, it is going to be Wellspring Ogre Pong that does get Terrastalized. Um, it's, it's a very strange switch out, for sure. Well, this is where my Pokemon playstyle being weird comes into play. The yeah, special defense is going to be a huge boost here, but Arcanine being a physical attack there. But with the Ivy Cudgel, it might not even have a chance to kind of play. It's going to go with the Pelipper. It's going to resist it, thankfully. Uh, obviously, being a water type, it's going to be able to resist that, but the Bleak Wind Storm is going to take out that Pelipper. Now, the point I was making before is when I see a Pokemon that's a threat, and if one of my Pokemon might not be that good in the matchup, I just send it out and constantly say, go nuts, do whatever you want. I think he's just setting out this Arcanine right now to just let it wreak havoc and get whatever it can out of it. This is a pretty scary switch out for sure, especially if they did try and target for the like Landorus. Obviously, the switch out is pretty, um, it, it is it's good, it's like pretty obvious. You know, if you're the Lando T, you obviously or Lando I, sorry, my apologies. You obviously do want to switch out, and maybe they were thinking that they did bring the Urshifu Rapid Strikes in the back line, so that was maybe a, a solid play. But like even still, it, it was a scary switch in for sure. Um, like you see now, Urshifu Rapid Strikes is going to come in, benefit off of that rain, but so is Ogre Bomb. So is Ogre Bomb for sure, but that's where I think the Arcanine might come into play. Right now, Jesse's looking down two very potent attackers, and you're going to have to deal with both of them at some point, but which one you deal with first might spell doom for some of your Pokemon. Terrestrialization is going to be coming out now. Whether it's going to go on the Urshifu or the Arcanine, it's going to go on the Urshifu, and that's going to be the Water-type Terra, just to be all the more potent with its attacking. It's going to be a huge threat now. Over to Jesse. It's just going to be doing so much damage, plus with the Rain. Rain, thank... Uh, rain... Considering it now, it doesn't have that much time left. Tailwind mm-hmm. is going to get used by the Tornadus. Ivy Cudgel is going to be coming up most likely on the Arcanine. Yes, and that will most likely knock it out. The Arcanine is gone. That is one less attack that the Urshifu has to deal with, but it's not very favorable for you. This Urshifu is, in fact, running... It's Scarfed, I'm pretty sure, scarf. right? Yeah, yeah, it's still Scarfed, so... You can't even really Ooh, use it. Oh. This is tough. The Rocky Helmet is going to get that damage on Surging the Urshifu Rapture Strikes, too. And it, it hits three times. So that's three different hits from Rocky Helmet. That's a ton of damage going back yeah. onto Urshifu. 
And with now Jesse losing his first Pokemon, but with three left in the tank, Marcus down to just two, or just with that, did the Landers uh, get knocked out? I'm not sure. Is it is it just the Urshima? Lando I is still in the back line. I think it's Chen Chen Pao is okay. just gonna. It, this, this is just a clean sweep on yeah. honestly from Jesse. It's just a Ogre Pong goes for uh, like Wood Hammer right now. If they do have, I think they have Wood Hammer. No, they have Horn Leech, right? Either way. Like, Ogre Pong is going to lean into... Yeah, battle's canceled. It, it was pretty much just Jesse's just going to win it. Yeah. That's a clean 2-0 sweep from Jesse right there. Amazing play from them. And as we saw, the Pelipper might not have been the best option. It was still brought out. And, um, you know, Jesse did end up just taking advantage of it. I, I really do feel like that was... Uh, <sighs> I, I can't even say in hindsight gives you the benefit of clear vision. I'm still not sure what would have been the most optimal play uh, for Marcus would have been there, mm -hmm. but that lead might not have been it. Look, it's our camera boy. Oh, it's our look, camera boy. Shout out to Jace over there leading the camera. <laughs> but uh, of course, shout out to both trainers as well, giving us an excellent battle. Uh, we will be heading into the third round after this one, but while we're still fresh on the mind and with the trophies being shown, what we're really battling here for today. Uh, the point I was making just before, you know, the I feel like the play there was not very clear. And even mm -hmm. now after, with us both having the team sheet, right. we can't really decide what would have been the best play. I feel like, not to say the team was built badly, but I feel like this team was just not going to be very good against uh, Jesse's team in all situations. It's just not very good against it. I still think Marcus could have leaned into something. Right. Generally, when you see these like mixed sort of teams, right? Maybe among us. You do want to have at least a lead that makes sense. Yeah. Pelipper and Urshifu coming in like together makes sense. You do want to save Urshifu, right? Obviously, obviously want to save Urshifu, know, yeah. right? For the backline, you do want Urshifu to live. You want him to have high HP and stuff like that. Um, but but like at least that sort of makes sense. You're at least gonna sort of guaranteeing a knockout maybe on the Lando Eye that did exactly. come out twice. Yeah. Um, we didn't really have a consistent lead that just had any sort of oomph to it, you know? Exactly. Nothing nothing felt comfortable to yeah. lead with. Every, every, every lead, like the lead that uh, Jesse had, everything felt comfortable. You're mm -hmm. not making any risks. You're not yeah. making any specific call outs or anything like that. You have the you, you have the prankster tornadoes to get up Tailwind. And if not, if you do have Urshifu to come out or you do have anybody to come out, cool. I have Bleak Wind Storm, amazing, great. You also have the Lando T, Intimidate drop as well. Super strong Pokemon too, and with the at extra attack boost from like the choice band. Um, and it has quick pivot as well with uh, with U-turn. So if it's not a favorable matchup, it can just easily come back out, get some good damage off and, you know, sort of change up for a favorable matchup. Um, I do think Jesse was just a little bit more prepared um, than Marcus. I think Marcus maybe had some ideas that could have worked, um, but he just didn't sort of bring it all in together. Yeah, I think that might be the best way to look at it. Mm -hmm. The ideas were there, but there was too many risks that needed to be taken for yeah. anything to work out in your favor. And when you're playing against such a strong team, as again, this is more standard, this is tried and true, reliable, uh, standard team. When you're bringing something risky against that, it just it's an opportunity to see why this team is the standard. It just works in so many situations, a lot less room for error, and it will just work out in most of the situations that you have to deal with. Whereas again, Marcus had to do a lot more things to think about. I'm thinking now, as we're talking about it with the whole lead predicament, uh, Urshifu, Pelipper lead, maybe Amoongus, and Rage Bolt, but again, there's no potency there. The, the, heart, the Arcanine is just too fragile. Yeah. Chen Pao works because it's fragile, but it does so much damage, mm -hmm. right? Um, Arcanine, it does a lot of damage, but not enough to justify it, I feel. Um, so I think that might have been the issue there. Maybe a solid-ish or good enough lead, but not a lot left in the reserve tank to finish things up after that lead. So not a lot you could have worked with in the end. Right. Um, yeah, no, it, it was definitely a very interesting uh, strat. Obviously, it didn't work out too well for them. We'll see how well that Marcus can sort of change up their game plan to sort of get back in. There's still another, like, three rounds of exactly. Swiss. Still has a ton of time to get back in. I, I, you can so, you can maybe get in off of being three and two, but you can for sure get in being off four and one. 
maybe they can. Maybe they can make some changes and get back up into the top cut. Exactly. We'll sort of see how it goes. What are you excited to look forward to in round three before we end up heading into a break? I, I need to hear your thoughts. Well, for sure. You know, we're, I believe we're just following all the winners. So whoever mm -hmm. we're going to be following is most likely going to be 3-0 in the next matchup. Yeah, most so likely. So I'm curious to see, because like I said, there are some whispers, murmurs of maybe just psychic spam teams coming out. Yeah. We haven't seen any so far. We haven't seen any psychic spam teams, no. Yeah, as soon as we head into the third round, I feel like that's where we're going to see the, you know, strong separated from the week. Right. Or like, what, what, what really is working here today? I feel like in the third round, that's what we're going to see. Um, and I'm excited to kind of get a feel for what the rest of the tournament is going to be looking like today. How about you? Yeah. Before we go to a break. You mentioned Psy Spam, um, something that we have, haven't seen too much. I, I know we do have a couple of these these sort of teams, but these uh, well, like Snow work. Blizzard teams that we've seen, especially like popularized in Eurotrek, um, back when like Arcanine, or sorry, Arcanine, oh my gosh, I'm Articuno. <laughs> oh, my, yes. my brain's not really working too well. Sorry, everybody. We're still a little bit sick. Um, uh, but Arti the Articuno Blizzard Spam teams um, have been sort of getting a bit popular now with mm -hmm. that Eurotrek uh, regional like victory. Um, haven't seen any of those. Haven't seen any Sun teams. Haven't seen any hard-leaning rain teams. Yeah. We've only seen today, and it's only been two rounds. It's only been four exactly. teams so far. We've only seen like just solid, balanced teams. And we haven't seen anybody that leans into any trick room. We haven't seen any Ferrigraph yet. We will no eventually see this for sure. Um, but it just hasn't happened yet. I'm just excited to see a strategy that leans very heavily into something, right? Uh, that's sort of what I'm a fan of. I'm a fan of, like, you know me. I love my trick room teams. I I'm a big fan of Ferrigraph. What can I say? Um, but, but that's what I'm sort of excited for. I'm excited to, I, I hate balanced teams. Ogre Palm, <laughs> get out of here. Urshifu, get out of here. Bring me for Rigorath, baby. Specialize. Specialize. Yeah, I, I'm just, that's what I'm excited for. I'm excited to see some sort of like, you know, interesting and unique game plans. And what I was my point before and again before we throw it to a quick break, just to recap my thoughts on it, I feel like heading into the third round, mm -hmm. if we're seeing teams just like Jesse's, we're gonna know for sure that's what everyone who's winning is running. But if right. we're gonna still see some general, more flexible teams in heading into the third round then we're going to know for sure whether or not that's a viable strategy here today. But as we're getting ready for round three coming up, mm -hmm. that exciting and anticipated third round, we're going to really figure out what's working here. We're going to throw it to a quick break, and we hope to see you guys very soon.